I don't even know where to start. I threw the studio together. It's been kind of a mess uh, with Christmas break and New Year's and all that stuff. But we have huge news from Apple with the creation of the new Creator Studio. Um, we're going to stumble through this. Uh, I couldn't go live because my live stream setup is tore apart. Um, but we're just going to go through the website, the press release, and try to get our heads around uh, what Apple has just announced. Now, the big thing that I'm seeing in here, and we'll look at it closely, is that Apple has added three new major features to Final Cut Pro, including beat detection, visual search, which means, like I've mentioned numerous times, you can type into the browser, uh, they show a sample, a uh, man on stairs or something with stairs, and all the clips that are related to that are going to show up in the browser. Uh, and then there's also a transcript search where it's going to analyze the transcript, all the audio for every clip that you have in your media, uh, in your browser, and you can search your clips based on the transcript. I have been asking for the this feature, these features for years, uh, especially because it's in the photo app, the, the the visual search aspect to it, and they have finally brought it to Final Cut Pro. So this is monumental news. Now, one of the big negatives everybody's going to bring up is they're going to subscription. Yes, this is a subscription, $12.99 a month or $129 a year. And then there's some discounts if you're an educator or a student. But the subscription is optional. You can still purchase all of these apps standalone, uh, own them and get them updated. I already own most of them, so it's not a big deal. I, 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 I'm still reeling. I literally just processed all this information probably within the last 20 minutes. It's getting, um, it's going on X. All of my friends in the Final Cut Pro community are texting me about it. Um, this is a big deal. I actually typed in the, uh, in the browser, creatorstudio.com, and there used to be some website called Creator Studio, and there's like a sign on there that says they're now defunct and they're done, whatever. So Apple must have uh, bought out the trademark and all that stuff to allow for this. So let's just take a quick look at what's all in Creator Studio. You got Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, Pixelmator Pro, Keynote, Pages, Numbers, Freeform, Motion, Compressor, and Main Stage. Uh, the keynote pages numbers, I mean, I kind of get it, but it seems like, oh, uh, let's just kind of sweeten the deal and throw in what used to be the iWork suite of apps. Oddly enough, what is missing is Photomator. Um, Apple acquired that uh, and uh, it's not here. I wish that Aperture was brought back and existed. Uh, maybe there's something going on where that app needs updates or stuff needs to happen to it whatever, to get it back up and running. Interesting too, these new icons. Are these going to be the new icons in the dock? This video up here um, shows a, like a dock animation. So I don't know if these will be part of the all new look of um, Mac OS as it approaches in the fall, or if they're going to change things for Monterey. I have no idea. But this is all an interesting look for these apps. Um, and uh, this is crazy. So one month free as a new subscriber, $12.99 per month or $129 per year after your free trial, one month free for students and educators, $2.99 per month or $29.99 per year after your free trial. Um, new devices, if you buy a new um, Apple device, you get three months for free uh, with the uh, a Mac or an iPad purchase. So the things that I'm most excited about here is with Final Cut Pro and I want to zoom in on this so we can take a closer look. Start to finish, this is all normal stuff. Shoot pro-level footage with complete control and Final Cut camera on iPhone, then edit on iPad, all that kind of stuff. I haven't really pixel-peeped these graphics to see if there are any new interesting features as it relates to that, but I'm not seeing anything there. Here's the big one. Instantly find the moment you're looking for, track down a shot without scrubbing through footage using a new feature that they've capitalized, visual search, and locate the perfect soundbite with only a few keywords using transcript search. Now, this is showing doing it with the filter which bums me out a little bit if you can only do it with filtering because I really want it to be in the browser when you have a library loaded. And I'll get one loaded here real quick. Uh, we'll open up old Christmas vinyl here and then go to footage. And so I want the search to be where the magnifying glass is. I want it to be up here, not after you click on this sort of refined search criteria. And then you have to 
set all this up. Now, the pro editors that are doing documentary and features, they're going to have all that kind of ready to go so they can move quickly. But for someone like me who's doing sort of documentary style YouTube um, videos across all my channels, it just feels like a few extra steps than what I prefer. I just want to type in the browser, uh, you know, man on stairs and then have that clip come up. I don't want it to be part of the more advanced filtering options in Final Cut. But not trying to complain too much. It's just incredible that we have this. Uh, and, and hopefully the transcript aspect isn't, um, I, I'm assuming you're going to click on this Dropbox and it's going to show the word transcript and then you're going to type in there. So, okay, you know, not the easiest way to do it uh, for the user, but still a great little add on there. And then this is just another plug for the magnetic timeline. Apple's got a few of their standard features mixed in here. But then we have beat detection. Now, you can't really see too much with the user interface, but there's this green little music note square glowing icon. There's these dashed lines that are showing different beats, a dashed line, then solid green lines. Perfect timing every time. Beat detection matches your music's rhythm so you can align clips effortlessly and keep your edits in sync with the beat. I've been editing in Final Cut Pro doing concert video content since I was, I think since 2006, 2000, no, I'm sorry, 2008, when I moved to Los Angeles and started immediately working in video editing for the screen content. We would edit visuals to the beat of the music constantly, and we would have to manually stare at the waveform, use markers. It's a huge pain in the butt. I was just working on Trans-Siberian Orchestra this past fall, and I was beating out songs. This feature would have been a game changer for that process. Now, anybody who's editing music videos, anybody who's e editing B-roll to the beat of the music, this is incredible for you to be able to speed up that workflow and really make sure you're nailing uh, the cuts to the beat as much as possible. So three huge new features in Final Cut Pro, and it honestly has me wondering, what else are they going to throw in there that we haven't seen yet? These are the ones that make that big, splashy marketing uh, marketing impact so that people are excited. You get the hype building up for January 28th when this releases, and everybody's either poised to do the updates to their apps that they already have and, and, and paid for, or to go ahead and subscribe to Creator Studio. Now, I'm not going to get into the other apps like Pixelmator and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into motion. I mostly wanted to focus this video simply around the existence of Creator Studio, which we'll get into that in a minute. The existence of Creator Studio and, of course, these new features that they're teasing for Final Cut Pro, which is just, just incredible that these three major features, capitalizing on Apple intelligence, no doubt, um, are going to be part of the big push in the spring and the fall to uh, show off the new Macs uh, and new features in Final Cut Pro. Uh, and this is, to me, uh, a, a really strong uh, showing to, that Apple is committing to uh, not only uh, professionals, high-end professionals, even though these features aren't game changers at the highest levels of post-production and video editing, I think this is showing that Apple is committed to these apps. They are committed to creating something reminiscent of what Final Cut Studio used to be. And who knows what they're going to do to better integrate Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro Compressor in Motion, and then possibly Pixelmator and Photomator. If Photomator ends up staying Photomator, it'd be awesome if they brought it back as Aperture. I would be blown away if they did that. And hopefully it's excluded from this because they're going to do a big reveal that they brought Aperture back. That would really send some shockwaves through the photography community and uh, creatives who work with Apple as well. So yeah, I think this is this is a good, strong indicator of re-upping that commitment. Um, I'm trying to think. I think the only thing that you will miss out on if you don't subscribe to Creator Studio is you'll still have to subscribe to Final Cut for iPad. Uh, I don't think that that is going to be made available as a standalone purchase. I think they're just going to stick with a subscription. And uh, if you want it, you can get it as part of Creator Studio or you can subscribe to it individually if you, like me, already own most of these apps from having purchased them years and years ago. So 
you know, I make all these videos about the future of Final Cut Pro and what this or that means regarding Apple. And one of my last videos was sort of feeling like the year ended on a whimper um, as far as Apple goes. Sure, there were some big things, big releases, iPhone 17, um, a little bit of stuff with software and Final Cut Pro. But for the most part, I personally was underwhelmed. And this is a great way to start off 2026 with not only big updates to Final Cut Pro, but a huge new reveal of this all new creator studio suite of apps um, i'm going to link down in the description and maybe at the end of the video a video i made called the return of final cut studio or something to that effect where i really urged apple and talked about why final cut studio was such an awesome uh an awesome thing for pro post-production professionals and, and why they should really consider having something like that in the future even if they didn't make like a Final Cut Pro Pro, could they create a higher end version of Final Cut Pro that would have a lot more features comparable to something like DaVinci Resolve that the high end users could sort of level up to and the users that are just doing social media and more simple things could stick with Final Cut Pro as is. Uh, so who knows if something like that is on the horizon with Creator Studio now being launched, but this really bodes well, I think, for Apple's commitment, not only to Final Cut Pro, but their professional creative apps that really were the foundation of the company in trying to get people to shell out a lot of money for their computers back in the 80s. Uh, especially. Um, it was always perceived of as the computer for creatives, for designers, for makers of things. Um, and I think this is a really awesome return to form for that. Now, you might be saying to yourself, okay, Apple fanboy, you're just Mr. Positive. Everything's great. It's hard not to be excited about this. Three major features being teased for Final Cut Pro. We don't have to sit here in secrecy not knowing what's coming. We can expect them to be released in two weeks weeks on January 28th, and then just the creation of the Creator Studio itself, a renewed commitment from Apple that they, they, they hear us and they're going to be doing things that benefit us. And then lastly, the option to subscribe. Apple is not telling you in order to use these apps, you have to pay a monthly subscription. You can buy them outright or you can subscribe. And I think this should be the model for all companies, the plug-in companies, the uh, th uh, extensions for Final Cut Pro. My phone's blowing up right now. Um, all of that stuff. We should have the option to purchase things uh, as a standalone purchase or choose to subscribe if we want to. That's my thinking. Now, I'm going to switch over to ChatGPT because I, I asked it to summarize the website and I want to just check it for anything that might have that I might have missed here. Um, the core apps, pricing and subscription details, we already covered that. Um, a standard subscription supports family sharing for up to six people. Um, the one-time purchase is still available. How the subscription works, once subscribed, you get full access to all Creator Studio apps across Mac and iPad as long as you remain subscribed. Project ownership. Projects created in Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, or Pixelmator Pro remain on your devices and can be copied or shared. To open or edit them, you must have an active subscription. That's one of the big complaints about subscriptions. The projects that you create under a subscription, if that subscription lapses or if that company stops um, offering a subscription or that the apps go defunct or whatever, your work is held captive. Now, one thing you could do is you could export an XML and that would give you some approximation of preserving your edits. And then you could open them in an older version of Final Cut Pro or whatever, uh, or a different um, editing software altogether. It might be some issues if you do that. But that's one of the big issues with subscription. It's sort of rent where you don't have access to your projects if your subscription lapse lapses. And that is the case with this. So please make note of that if you're going to subscribe versus purchasing. Keynote pages, numbers, and freeform remain free to use for everyone. Um, so uh, the subscription is going to unlock premium content in those apps like templates, royalty-free media, and AI features. So you can use a base level uh, of the iWork apps, including freeform, uh, for free, just like you can you have for years. But to get the really cool stuff, you're going to have to subscribe. So that, for me, um, 
I just have the free versions of Keynote pages and numbers. So this is a way for them to incentivize me to add a subscription. If I want to use those cool new features that they're adding, I'm going to have to pay the $12.99 a month, even though I've already bought Final Cut Pro, Compressor, Logic Pro, all of those apps. So that's an important detail as well. Um, requires an Apple ID, interconnect, internet connection, and up-to-date Mac OS. It looks like you're going to have to be on Mac OS 26, iPad OS 26, all that stuff to be able to use this. Final Cut Pro within the bundle has specific hardware OS requirements, Mac OS 15.6, iPad with M1 or A-series chips, and iPad um, OS 18.6. Um, a summary of the important Final Cut Pro updates, Creator Studio doesn't just bundle the apps, it also enhances Final Cut Pro with new AI-powered tools, including AI-driven editing features like visual search, transcript search, and beat detection. These updates represent a significant workflow acceleration for editors and content creators, bringing smart search AI-assisted organization and rhythm-aware editing directly inside Final Cut Pro. And that's a quote from Reuters that's running the story. I don't know... If Apple's going to sort of split Final Cut Pro, is it going to be these updates only apply if you are part of Creator Studio or these updates will exist if you've purchased a standalone version of Final Cut Pro? I think it's going to work both ways, unlike Keynote, Pages, Numbers, and Freeform. Why this matters? Creator Studio is Apple's first major subscription service bundling multiple Pro apps, a strategic move to compete directly with Adobe Creative Cloud while leveraging Apple's hardware ecosystem. That's a quote from Barron's. It provides professional tools at a dramatically lower monthly cost versus legacy competitors, also from Barron's. The subscription model changes how creators access Final Cut Pro and other apps, moving from one-time purchases to flexible recurring access with enhanced features. So I'm going to be very curious to see if enhanced features are only accessible through the studio subscription, the Creator Studio subscription. If that's the case, that's where people are going to be really, really bothered by this news. If you can only get visual search, beat detection, and all that stuff through the subscription, it's going to be very, very upsetting. All right, so as I edit this, I am getting word from some sources that it is not a requirement to have a subscription to use the new AI features for Final Cut Pro, like visual search, transcript search, uh, and beat detection. You do not need a subscription. The standalone app will allow you to use those features. So that is incredible news. So for those of you who get frustrated about subscriptions, Apple is showing us that you don't have to get frustrated with them. But here's the big news. Final Cut is getting big updates. Apple has created a new suite of apps using some of the apps they've recently acquired and apps that they've had for years to create the new Creator Studio to compete with Adobe Creative Cloud. All right, let me know down in the comments what you think, and I will keep my eye on all of this information, other videos that come out, and we will, uh, I'm sure, talk about it in the coming weeks. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.